Thanks for being here. Um, it's nice to have a chance to talk to the media and then our fan base as well. As well, it's been a while since we talked. So I just have a few opening remarks and then certainly uh, want to take your questions. But I want to begin by certainly thanking Justin Fuente for his six years here. Uh, we greatly appreciate his efforts, the way he focused on his family, uh, focused on doing things the right way, and simply how hard he and his staff worked to try and make us better. He was a coach of the year. He has great records against our rivals and on senior day, and he will land on his feet, and we wish him well. We made this change in leadership most simply because we did not have the level of consistency nor the full de development of a true team identity. I want to empathize with our fans, donors, and alumni. Uh, you guys show up and show out, and we want to match your level of excellence on the field. Everyone in our department, including me, is 100% committed to getting this back to the level we expect and exceeding levels we've already achieved in the past. We expect that at Virginia Tech. This is my school too. I care very deeply about it, and it means a lot. That hasn't changed since day one. I want to thank and recognize our players, our students at Virginia Tech who play football at the highest level. <clears throat> They've been through a tremendous amount the past two years. We've worked to keep our focus on them and made decisions that we felt were are in their best interest. I have a son going through their daily, daily life of my own at another school and the way that I communicated with them this morning as if they were my own. They are, after all, someone's sons and they are loved. I ask them, our coaches and the remaining staff, to overcome adversity once again, to finish off the season right, to rally around the interim staff and do it for one another and do it for Virginia Tech. That we also, and that we also have amazing people to help them during these difficult times. A little bit on timing so you know uh, how we got to this point. Justin and I meet every Wednesday. We have for a long time. We met last week. Um, it was at a point in time that I could not tell him um, with certainty that he would continue to be the coach here. I had said I was strongly Considering it, um, and then at that point, when he realized he would likely not be the next coach, he wanted to um, move on, and I respect that opinion. Um, yesterday, we mutually agreed uh, to everything. That's why the timing this morning, the team meeting was at 7.30. We certainly wanted to hear them first. You will hear about the buyout number uh, in due time, but it was compromised uh, in the middle at $8.75 million. Um, Justin and I met again at 6.30 this morning. Then I met with J.C. Price at 6.45, our team at 7.30. Uh, Justin went first and then me, and then they went off to position meetings and practice. J.C. Price is our interim head coach. Um, I made that decision. We made that decision. We think he's the right man for that position. This is his school. It also enabled us, we felt, to let our coordinators still focus on calling plays and giving our kids the best chance to win these last two games. Our other assistants and support staff, uh, I will visit with them later today, right? Changes like this often change many lives. Um, we will also be visiting soon by Zoom with committed recruits. A uh, couple more things. We do believe and know that we have a tremendous job to offer to the next coach. We have a tradition of high-level success, and we've got to get that back and exceed it. Our goals and expectations here are to win the division and certainly compete for winning the ACC on a regular basis. We have tremendous fan support. Our stadium is amazing. There is none better than, the, than Lane Stadium on game day. Our donor, su donor support is tremendous. We've gone over 20,000 donors, greatly elevated our budget. Our academic support, medical support, nutrition, and more. Eight years into this as AD, we have put the right people in place to be successful for the next coach. Virginia Tech is a unique and special place. We see this as a destination job. Our, lo our location is a plus in many ways, whether that's recruiting, being in the heart of the ACC and the Mid-Atlantic, and more. The seeds that we have planted years ago are blooming now. That financial narrative on our commitment is dated and tired. We came into the COVID year, you've heard me use the metaphor of a pit stop, right? After last year, all 15 cars in the ACC were pulling into the pit. Some had 20 million in damage, some had 40, some had 10. And the way we came out of that pit stop and that time period, we've elevated our budget in the league from eighth to fourth. 
We've developed trem tremendous recruiting infrastructure. We have a group of 20 donors, our team first group, that contributes significantly annually uh, seven figures above and beyond our budget to help football get where it needs to go. We have a residence hall that is completed, not on a easel anymore. These seeds were planted. A $110 million residence hall where all of our freshman student athletes stay, and those rooms were patterned after Alabama's. We also have a new $20 million student athlete performance center and nutrition area that recently opened. It is not on an easel, it is open. We renovated all of our weight rooms, expanded our position meeting rooms. Every square foot of our football facility, which encompasses through two buildings, has been renovated. The players' lounge is completed, and the locker room is our final piece. Our facilities are in the top one to two in this league. That is not my opinion. It is my opinion, but it is also factual from people that have seen all the facilities in this league. We have amazing alignment and commitment and direction from the president to the AD to the Board of Visitors and our university has helped us tremendously and further shows this commitment to the next coach. This is a place to do something special never before been been seen at Virginia Tech. Our next coach will get us there. We have former cares that player that care. This place changed their life for the better. So those are all the reasons there's many more but why this is a great opportunity for the next coach. The things we need to work on before the next coach arrives or when he arrives, we need to continue enhancing our operating budget to some extent. We need to get our conference revenue distribution up and Comcast and the <coughs> ACC network. We need to finish off our recruiting staff investment, the full structure of the next coach will help us on that. The locker room is our last facility piece, I mentioned that. And then we want to put even further investment into our performance center, nutrition center and double down on the impact that is having. Lastly, what we are looking for in our next coach, and these are in no particular order and there could have been a longer list, but we are looking for a proven track record of success. We are looking for a coach that fits the values of Virginia Tech and what we stand for. We're looking for a coach that will engage the community successfully locally and beyond. We're looking for a leader, a CEO, that has character and competence. We're looking for a teacher and an ed educator that's committed to the total student athlete experience and what it develops in young people. We're looking for a coach with a vision, a plan, and a tremendous ability to recruit this footprint successfully. We're looking for a coach that can do player evaluation, player development, and hires a great and complimentary staff around him. We want a coach that is comfortable in the paradigm of being at the top of the ACC. We define excellence at Virginia Tech is to rise up and surpass, and that's exactly what we need the next coach to do and that we fully plan to do. We need a coach that can relate and thrive in the new era of athletes today and coaching styles, the new NCAA structure, yet with discipline. That discipline is important, small things equal big things, and attention to detail. And lastly, the coach that we're looking for ultimately will buy into our single-minded proposition in our athletic department, and that is that we create memorable experiences that only Virginia Tech can offer. After today, I won't have any public comment until we introduce our next coach. It's a reminder to our fans that every leak has a motive. Hang in there and let's support our team this next two weeks and hopefully get to a bowl game. Thanks for your time and go Hokies. I will now take any questions y'all may have. back to your press conference last year, identity was something you didn't mention very mm -hmm. much at all in, in, in that press conference. So I'm curious why that took on such a greater importance. Yeah. And what other benchmarks, because you said last year winning wasn't going to be the determining factor. So what other benchmarks did yeah. you use in terms of not having consistency yeah, if I ever said winning doesn't matter, that was an incorrect no, statement. You said that wins yeah. and losses wouldn't be the defining. Yeah, they're up defining, there though. Yeah. So yeah. No. Other I'll, aspects of consistency yeah. were there that you. I'll just I'll yeah. just leave it at that. I don't know that it serves any purpose to go through all of that and um, yeah, just just lack of consistency and I didn't feel like we had a real consistent team identity. So well, I'll just leave it at that. The last eleven months. That identity became more important since you just. I think it became uh, a little more evident, yes. And what identity were you hoping to find? Is this something that, in yeah. terms of 
play style or off the field sort of focus? What I, I would say, say play play style, but other than that, Mike, you can keep asking me that question. I'm going to keep telling you that it's uh, lack of identity and lack of consistency. Wait, you said after it became clear that, that he would be back next year that he decided mm -hmm. Not to finish out the season. Would you have liked him to finish out the season with yeah. Virginia on the schedule? Yeah, certainly. And I, I want to say this uh, two ways. Um, certainly would have liked for that to happen, but I also understand Justin's point that, hey, if, if, if I'm not the guy and you don't believe in me, then we need to do this. So I don't want to paint Justin in a poor corner. I don't think he quit on anybody. I think his meeting with the team today was great. And I don't know how I would handle it if the roles were reversed. But yes, he had that option. And on the interim coach, uh, the timing one worked out with our conversations with Justin, but we also felt like giving them a two-week runway rather than just one potentially next week, and we feel like Coach Price is the right guy for the job. And then we challenged all of our remaining staff. Um, every one of them has talked to a player at some point about grit and overcoming adversity, and that's what I expect of our staff through this, too. If they ask it of 18- and 19-year-olds, I'm going to ask it of them. What went into the consideration for JC? Did he just yeah. find out about this this morning? Uh, he and I talked this morning. Uh, I believe he had some idea late last night. But um, just felt like he was the best. It doesn't mean that there are other coaches that couldn't do it. Again, he played here. It's his school. I believe in him. And it still enabled our uh, coordinators to uh, stay focused on their day job and give these guys the best chance to win two games and go to a bowl game. Jermaine. Uh, with um, as far as the next person to take over this position, are you looking for more someone with head coaching experience or someone that maybe is an assistant? Where Where is your preference mm -hmm. on that? Typically, uh, head coaching experience, we wouldn't rule out an assistant coach, right? Every great head coach was an assistant at some point. Um, uh, it, I wouldn't say we'll ha necessarily have an offensive or a defensive slant, so it's it's pretty wide open. But typically, yes. At this level, it's tough for people to break in with their first head coaching job. Not everybody, but that's tough to do. So likely on a sitting head coach, yes. And they will not, many of them will not be finished playing for two or three weeks. So um, anyways, we'll start the process and uh, do a good job with it. Do you have a timetable on a decision or do you have a schedule? No, no, I've learned not to do that. Um, <laughs> I think you just take the few weeks left in the season, and y'all typically know the timing of that. But as soon as we can, um, but we've got to get it right. Aaron. With your hiring track record here is very good. And six years ago, your decision was universally applauded, I think, everyone mm -hmm. in this room and, and nationally. When, when you have a situation that starts like that and doesn't work out, I mean, what have you learned from that? <coughs> yeah. Sort, certain maybe are there characteristics that you weren't seeking back then that you now are? Yeah, you know, I think we all learn from it, right? Like, Justin didn't fail, our team didn't fail, we all did, you know? And when you hire somebody in, it feels a whole lot different when um, you have to part ways, you know? It's not, obviously doesn't get the attention, but it bothers me that we had to reboot in volleyball and lacrosse too, coaches that I've hired here. But, um, I believe our body of work speaks for itself over a 10-year period. I believe if you look out there, uh, there's not many ADs that maybe haven't missed on one. It's kind of like a five-star recruit sometimes works out, sometimes doesn't. You just do the best you can. And I thought we got off to a great start with Justin, and then um, it, it just didn't go where we wanted it to go. So, you mentioned, you mentioned the next coach would have to be one that's really engaged with the community. Uh, perhaps how much did you learn just how vital that is through this tenure in how important it is to have someone that's willing to, you know, be yeah. there, be a face for the program. Yeah, and please, that that list is not pointing out what Justin didn't do. He did a lot of those things great. But I do believe that at Virginia Tech, right, uh, you don't necessarily blend in. Uh, people know who you are. The standards set by Coach Beamer. So somebody that is comfortable in Virginia and the Mid-Atlantic doing that outreach, um, you cannot be insular these days. And um, anyways, that's what we're looking for is somebody that can successfully engage the community that understands it. Fit is an overused term, but in this case, it's appropriate. David. Wait, you mentioned how important it is that the fans continue to support Virginia Tech Athletics and, and the program. You guys have upgraded a lot of facilities lately. How important do you think those are going to be to pitch whoever comes in? Yeah. 
Well, obviously, we think they were important. Um, we started all that probably five years ago. Really, David, what I think facilities do, certainly they're nice to recruit to, train to, but quite simply, it shows a commitment, right, that football is important here. It's the same reason we built a new engineering building and there's a big old jet engine hanging in there. It's so when engineering students come in, they go, wow, this place, engineering is important. So same concept, and we do have um, – it would be much more concerning if we were just identifying some of these areas to improve today versus years ago. Mike? In terms of the buyout, um, was it all a lump sum then changed to instead of quarterly installments? Um, that was being worked out. Um, I believe it will be a lump sum, but I know that was still being worked out. And again, it, you guys know the dates. Um, so we simply met in the middle between seven and a half and ten million. And then for the assistant coaches, do you have a number how much that'll cost? Five and how to yeah, I don't have a total number. I do upstairs. I don't know it. Um, all of our assistant coaches, I believe, are on letters of appointment that end this June thirtieth. Uh, James Shebus may be on one that's a little longer, but we will be visiting with all of them, and um, that's how theirs are structured. And then you let. The next head coach bring in his people, right? You may have some that you say, hey, can you interview and talk to them? And they may or may not keep them. I would certainly love for that to happen, but I'm not even going to remotely begin to handcuff the next coach. He, or so he, he has system. to, yeah, always, every head coach we hire, he or she has to go with their um, decision, sink or swim with that. And as long as it makes sense and background checks, then they can hire the assistants they want to hire. Was there a turning point this season for you in terms of a moment when you you said last week, you know, you couldn't tell him anymore that he was going to keep being the coach. Um, what was the moment for you then when you realized that yeah. this had to? Yeah, I don't know that that uh, – I'm not trying to be difficult with you, Mike. You cover us great. I don't know that that does a whole lot of good to, to get into it. I was just raised to unconditionally support coaches 100% until the day you can't. And it just got to a day that I couldn't do it anymore. And Justin, this was – right, he didn't – we came together on this. He handled it like a pro, and I know how tough this is on him and his family. And you, last year you talked about you taking ownership of some of the struggles and some of the, the direction of the football program. I'm curious, was there anything you missed <coughs> last year in doing your evaluation that you feel like you should have spot? And what, anything you look at over the last 11 months that you could have done differently, yeah. you feel like? Um, hindsight's a pretty amazing tool. Um, I will say this. Look, I have looked back on it plenty of times. <coughs> No, no, I don't. I wouldn't change the decision that we made um, last year. It was well thought out. Um, my communication of all that was pretty poor in some cases, but I was trying to bring the Hokie family back together. If Justin was going to be our coach, which he was, I was trying to show support for him and then let our signing class see that. So uh, the messaging wasn't as great as I'd like to do. Last year was the hardest I've ever had professionally and um, personally, and uh, I just don't know that I communicated well. But no, those decisions were sound. Um, that was the right thing to do. Typically, you don't want to change. You do want to change if you feel like one more year can dig you a deeper hole. I do feel like our staff had some success, our recruiting had some success. So no, I don't, I don't regret that. In a leadership role, you make decisions and you own it, and um, some work out and some don't. But uh, my goodness, I'm going to give it my best to make it right. I do on all of them. Are you going to hire a search firm for, all, for this search? I don't think so, no. Aaron. There's a lot of high-profile jobs coming mm -hmm. up across the country, a lot of them out west. But, uh, I'm curious if the timing of this at least gives you – put your hat in the ring a little earlier. Yeah, a little and, bit. And what are the challenges of, kind yeah. of competing against the LSUs and the potentially Miami, yeah. you never know, Texas. Yeah, you don't know. Um, none of this was done – for that, you know, if you have a couple weeks, you can certainly be a little more open in your communications and things. You always want to pay respect to the sitting head coaches. So I did not go behind Justin's back. Um, uh, any of that? I'm sorry, Aaron. My mind was bouncing around. Help me I again. I guess the on challenges that. Of, of you know, you, there's there's other jobs out there. Yeah, that yeah. People will be looking at. So the timing was not that. It does give you a little bit of a runway. Um, really, until the season shakes out and all the jobs are open, I'm not sure that you can get a huge running start, but yes, this will give us a little bit of a running start. It was not part of the equation. I think we could have also done it at the end of the year and been been ready. Do you anticipate 
fundraising to pay off the buyout, or, or has that been? Um, yeah, we're allocated? we're working through that. Um, whether it's reserves, whether it's um, some financing, some other things. But I've been incredibly pleased with our fundraising. And again, while COVID was going on, what we did by Zooms and to bring in our team first group, that's what we call this group. We have room for a few more, certainly. Um, but what that group does, bringing in approximately two and a half to $3 million a year on top of our operating budget, they've really stepped up for that. And Justin was a part of that plan, right? We laid it all out a few years ago. They bought in. And I'm hopeful they will stay with us for the next one. Curious. Uh, early signing day. Mm -hmm. uh, do you talk with JC or the staff about you know, what do you tell recruits? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, that call with recruits and their families or anybody they want on it, we will do that by Zoom. I'm hope, hoping it's later today or at least they get the notice later today and we talk tomorrow and uh, we'll tell them the truth in all fronts. Obviously, you hope to hold it together. You hope they will hang in there and see who the next coach is. But um, Anyways, we will shoot them straight. We'll tell them how much we want them, um, and then we'll update them when we can. Let's go to Zoom, David Teal. Wait, you, you said earlier that it's a tired narrative that Virginia Tech lags behind the pack. The NCAA financial numbers in 2019-20 said Virginia Tech's assistant coaching salary pool was the lowest among ACC publics. What have you done since to to upgrade that? How much have you been able sure. to do that? Yeah, it's a couple of things there too, David. Whatever the coach asks us to pay them, I try to pay it. And we had a staff that had been with Justin. Um, not that we have unlimited resources. That's what he wanted to pay them. They also took a 10% pay cut to help us out. I think those were in those numbers. And then our head coaching salary is certainly towards the top of the league, the facilities I mentioned, um, and the things that I mentioned we need to work on, right? We have added uh, eight to 10 um, recruiting positions. We have a further plan for that. And the fundraising will certainly help us get there, David. I mean, we are certainly limited somewhat, but there's a few things that make me bristle, and when people don't think we have a commitment to football and it's not important, um, and we don't care, I don't, I don't like that too much. Not that you're insinuating that, but yes, we want to do better. We want to keep up talent retention, all those things, and I think our budget, moving from the middle of the ACC to the top tier, uh, a four, five, maybe, um, we're okay overachieving from eighth, but I'd much rather overachieve from fourth or fifth, and I think we can do it from there. Not that we will settle for that position either, but um, we've come through this. And again, David, if this was something we were just identifying today, I think that would be cause for concern. But these are things we identified years ago and have been working the plan. And then Andy mentioned earlier the early signing date mm -hmm. in football. Was that part of your thinking here? We, we see so many programs now cutting loose a coach in the middle of the season, in part because of recruiting and the attempt to get the class settled there in mid-December rather than early February. How much of that factored in? Yeah, you know, I think that can work two ways, David. Uh, sometimes if you make a change early in the season, it may give those recruits a longer time to think through things. Um, um, it was not necessarily part of the timing. I don't. I know I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth, but I don't. I don't really believe in cutting coaches off before the end of the year. This was just a unique situation. There was some compromise, um, and that's the way Justin and I worked it out. But the recruiting class, David, yes, is very important. But no, um, that was not a primary driver for this timing. Hank. Hey, Witt. Um, you just mentioned the word compromise. How much do you fear or how much concern do you have that compromising on the buyout could also compromise the commitment of some of those kids since a lot of them, it's the big kahuna the himself who sways them to come somewhere? Yeah, I guess just when it gets to the time that you know, you tell the truth and then you work on it after that. So. I'm well aware of that. I hope they have a love for Virginia Tech, and we're going to do our best to keep them. But I also know they're young people, and we'll make the right decision for them. But we're going to do our best to keep them in, in the fold if they want to be Hokies. It's a heck of a class. 
and you mentioned that you guys don't have unlimited resources is kind of where Justin was financially, where you can be with the next guy? Uh, I don't know that I want to put out all of that. I would just say, um, yeah, I mean, there's not too many schools with unlimited resources, but we're proud of what we have. And I believe there's somebody that certainly wants to come coach here and we can give them what they need to be successful. That's what we always try to do with Justin as well. Thank you. Andrea. Hey, Witt, I think someone asked you earlier just about the early success um, Justin had. Um, why do you feel like once he got his players in, which is something that he had been adam adamant about over the course of his career there, that he wasn't able to win at level that he did early on? Sure. Uh, um, I, I won't go much into that just out of respect to Justin. I think you can evaluate that a lot of ways. Um, so just out of respect to him, I, I know our fans and you maybe deserve an answer, but I'd rather keep that to myself at this point. Okay, and um, a second question. Where do you feel like the program is right now in terms of talent, resources, and its positioning compared to when Justin took over the program from Frank? Yeah, I, I truly do believe it's better than it was. Um, Again, all of those remarks on our fundraising, on our recruiting staffing, I think Justin helped bring us a long way. So I actually think we're in a better position. We've gone through the difficult transition after a legend, um, and we are uh, more prepared, more sound, have better infrastructure than we did a few years ago. And I still do believe, I absolutely do, that's the reason I'm here. Um, I do believe we can be the preeminent program in the ACC. It goes in cycles, right? It was the Hokies for a while and then the Seminoles and Clemson and it's right there for the taking. So I think we have one of the best jobs in America. Every AD will say that, but I think it stacks up with anybody as far as a place to work and win. Paul? Wait, good morning. I know this is never easy for you and the coaches. Um, I won't ask you to give us the who, but I guess I'll ask the what. Do you already have a short list of potential coaching candidates for Virginia Tech? And if so, how many names are on that list <laughs> right now? Yeah, I'm not going to give you that one, um, but fair question. Um, certainly some names on a list, but we have not talked uh, with any coaches um, to this point, no. What is the time frame for you to start reaching out to them? You said earlier that some of them are still yeah. in season, and obviously you want to respect what they're doing at their at their particular programs. But do, w will you be able to reach out to them through their, I guess, their representatives early on, or is this something that we're just going to kind of have to sit on our hands and wait until the end of November? Yeah, I'll, I'll keep that one to myself too, but there are ways to, to touch base. Certainly it will be done in a way that's respectful to the coach, the other AD, but now that the decision is public, it does give us the ability to um, spread out and, and do some recon, but certainly you're always keeping an eye on other coaches who might fit, but uh, that list has not been finalized, um, and no, I, I'm not going to share the number that's on it. Thank you. Two more. All right, thanks, Whit. Uh, with brief question regarding the timing, was it important to you to have Justin coach that last game at home and hopefully get the win and get to go through senior day, or was that not a factor? Um, I, it, I was glad to see that happen. Um, all I did, guys, the timing, don't overthink it. I just told him the truth, and he told me the truth how we felt, and so that brought the timing. And I did not, once that was decided, I didn't want to wait another week. Um, and I don't think Justin did either because I didn't want to put an interim staff in on a, you know, one game. And um, again, uh, the interim staff we did put together is with every intent to give our guys the best chance to go play for each other and be successful. So when you see it through young people's eyes um, and you focus on them, I think that's a pretty good North Star. So once, once the two of you kind of came to this mutual understanding of where you were, it wasn't like it was a long process after that. No, there's certainly some things you have to work out and, and attorneys and a few other things. And um, But, yeah, once it's time to go, then then you do it. And, I, um, and again, I want to thank Justin. I feel, I feel for him. I know how hard he tried. Um, Five-star five recruit, it just didn't ultimately work out. 
Mike. Uh, will Justin Hamil Hamilton be given the opportunity to interview for the job? For the candidate? Yeah, that's up to the next coach. I meant for the head coaching position. I'm not going to get into that today. Man, you're asking some tough ones today, Mike. Well, he's on the staff and he isn't alone. We're going to just stop. Here. Yeah. All right, Tim, on Zoom. Where, what would you say to fans who may have some questions regarding the the caliber of the football hire, especially given how this tenure ended of Justin Fuente and your previous hire at Cincinnati of Tommy Tuberville? Sure. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up. Um, I would tell them that I apologize. I mean, it, it, you never go into it without it not expecting to work. Um, Coach Tuberville we hired at the time, it was – nationally acclaimed at that time at Cincinnati. There was conference realignment. We thought bringing a Power 5 coach in uh, would really jump it, and it did for a couple years. Um, I left. Uh, that's not the reason it went down. It just wasn't the right hire. And then the folks at Cincinnati have done a wonderful job bringing that back. But I, w I would say this. I treat every coaching search the same. Of course, football is more scrutiny, more pressure, more money, all of that. But I just have confidence in my and our track record over the 10 years. Um, and coaches that we hire, how we go about it. And again, you can go check it out. I think any, even the best ADs in this country, um, sometimes you just don't get them right. It's just the nature of the game. There's a winner and a loser, and um, sometimes you do everything that you feel is right, and it, and it doesn't. But um, So to the fans, man, y'all showed out. That was amazing. We want to bring you something that you can – be proud of, and we're going to work really hard on that. But no, I don't question my or our ability to do it at all. And how much in? Go ahead, Tim. How much input will you be looking to have from former players um, on this search and who you're looking for? Yeah, um, not too much. I mean, you. But the players know, especially the ones that played in the NFL. I want to hear what they have to say, and there will be a chance for that. But we have to do what's in our best interest. So we usually keep it pretty small, but I will say this, it's as, as good a place as I've ever been with our former care, former players wanting to help give back, recruit legally. Um, I think they're chomping at the bit, ready to go. So we're gonna lean on them pretty heavily, but no, I will not have a former player on the quote search committee, no. Anthony, with, with all the changes and you know, everything that's going on currently, what would you say that a, a win and a potential bowl game berth would mean for this current team and, and I guess the program? Yeah, you want to see young people get rewarded, you know. You certainly know that sports is going to knock them around a little bit and they'll learn from that. I think our team has learned a lot from a tough two years. So it would just make me happy for them. Uh, certainly a bowl game would get us back going, give us a chance to play some younger guys, some more practices. Um, so it would be a big deal. Um, and right, all the other games are in the past. Can't change those, but we can do our best on these next two. David Hale. Hey, Witt, um, two quick things. Uh, number one, you had mentioned that you want to hire somebody with a track record of success. Uh, does that preclude coordinators, or does that is that considered track record of success in your mind, or are you looking for somebody with head coaching experience? And uh, secondly, does the timeline on this get impacted by early signing period or, or – what, what sort of your – do you yeah. have a goal for when you'd like to have this done? Yeah, the early signing period, again, wasn't a factor in the timing today, but it's always a factor. Um, and, um, no, we would not rule out coordinators. All I mentioned earlier was typically, you know, we're in the risk removal business if we can. A sitting head coach that's done it, I just think there are some coordinators that can do it, but when your first job is a Power 5 job, sometimes it's a little tough to cut your teeth on that. So – but no, we don't rule out anybody. If it's the right person, even if they're not a coordinator, uh, we'll do it. It's just typically at this level, you like to try and find head coaching experience. David Teal. When, to, to fans, it was jarring. What impact at all did Justin's interviewing with Baylor have on you and your eventual thought process here? Yeah, a absolutely nothing to do with today. Um, that's in the past. We talked through that, got past it. He ultimately chose to stay at Virginia Tech. Um, so, no, no no impact on today. That's long since in the past. Mike? You mentioned in one of your answers it, just a couple minutes ago, search committee. Are you relying on anybody then for, uh, 
vetting or, or yeah, it's, or yeah, it's 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 usually a really small group, but I don't uh, care to share their names. I think that just puts more pressure on them and more phone calls. So a very small group. Certainly, I talked to the president. Um, we have some people in the department that that can help, but um, it's it's not a true committee. But it will also not be a one-person show. But the smaller, the better when it comes to leaks and being able to do things. So um, that's the way we'll go about it. Why do you think that, I mean, what, you know, last year you said, you know, how you tried to do a top-down evaluation and talk to everybody mm -hmm. good. Why take an opposite approach with sort of uh, a coaching search where you keep it small and sort of, I guess, yeah. take an opposite approach? Well, I don't know that it's opposite, Mike, because whenever you're trying to get feedback, it's got to be somebody you trust that's not going to have an angle or a motive to put it out there. So whether you're getting feedback on your team, whether you're getting feedback on other coaches, I think it's the same. It's smaller. I wouldn't call it an opposite approach, no. Is this committee different than the last one that you used to hire Justin Fuente? Uh, Desiree helped some then, so it would be a little bit different, yes. Anthony? Obviously, Justin came from Memphis, but how much would you say that you value Power 5 experience? In yeah, that's a fair question. Um, just because I wouldn't limit it to power five that would be great but uh just because one didn't work uh there are plenty that are so no i don't think if it's the right person uh they could come from a lot of different places i don't think you go into it that way you may have some goals but what i found in these we don't mind recruiting we think this is a really special place for a head coach um but ultimately you want somebody that wants to be here and if you can get your prospect list down from here are the guys we want to hear the guys that will say yes, even with a lot of work, that's what, what we'll work on soon. Because you can chase too much over here and lose these over here. But we'll certainly aim high and go for the best. And um, you know whether that's a guy that everybody recognizes their name or doesn't, then that's OK. The proof will be in the pudding. All right, one more, Mike. I'm curious, you've seen kind of across the country teams kind of get in a cycle of having to make coaching changes. Yeah, that is changing, um, yes. And is, is that caught your notice? And how? impactful is the transfer portal now with the rule that you could transfer one time sure where you kind of have to worry about you know so much attrition i mean is that something yeah. that kind of you calculated all like how much of the roster mm -hmm. you could lose or, i mean do you yeah go absolutely into questions like that yeah absolutely and I, I, I still think you need to build a program off of the signing class but admittedly in this new era i think you can build a program back with the right amount of transfers, right? It used to be you got to fill it all, maybe a couple junior college guys and all freshmen. Now the way rosters move around, um, hopefully it doesn't take as long, but it's got to be sound, right? Like if they're transfers and free agents, they got to mix in right with the team that is homegrown. So um, yeah, you take all that into consideration. And then with the players, we tell them how much we want them to stay. We also tell them uh, we will tell them the truth always if they have questions about that. And I just encourage them. Uh, to give it a little time, let's see who the next coach is. Um, there is a new deadline of May 1st for the football transfer portal for next fall. So hopefully they will um, be patient and see. And we really want them here so we can build around the group we've got. All right. Thank you, Whit. All right. Thank you all for coming.